Okay. Now for Nash and Naffel, I know it is increasingly difficult to find treatments that actually work on, on the, these patients. Why is it so difficult to develop new drugs for, for these, this group? Yeah, so I, there, there are some promising therapies on the horizon, um, but I think it can be really difficult to develop therapies um, for these patients, uh, given that uh, the disease itself is very heterogeneous, um, meaning uh, there may be many different phenotypes of, of NAFL. Um, some patients may respond to some therapies while the rest of patients with NASH and NAFL don't. Um, and that's why I think studies like um, target NASH are incredibly important for trying to identify those specific phenotypes and, and see how the um, treatments are working in, in a real world population. Um, with that said, is, in, is the end game kind of precision medicine or personalized medicine where we can treat each person a little differently? I, I, I think that's definitely going to play a role in the, in the strategy towards addressing NASH, yeah. Okay. And now, if we do develop new treatments for NASH and NAFLD, I would think that the amount of people who would need the pain dealt with would probably decrease as you're treating the underlying disease, correct? I'd hope so. Um, I don't know how much of the pain is attributable to the liver disease itself. Um, I think that NASH and NAFLD are associated with a lot of comorbidities, uh, chief among them being obesity and diabetes, which are associated with pain. And I think that any treatments for obesity and diabetes are going to be good for NAFL and are probably also going to be good for pain. Okay. Now, um, much like every specialty in the last seven, eight months, um, everyone kind of looking at how COVID impacts each organ, each, each body system. Uh, what have we learned as, as far as the liver and COVID, or even more specific in terms of NASH patients and NAFL patients and COVID? Yeah, so um, the, the data is still emerging, so we're learning more and more every day. Um, what we know at this point um, is that um, there is not yet strong evidence that um, chronic liver disease without cirrhosis is associated with worse outcomes from COVID-19. Uh, there has, have been uh, several studies um, recently um, published uh, that have demonstrated that cirrhosis um, is a risk factor for mortality from COVID-19. Um, and, and so I think hand washing, mask wearing, social distancing is going to be incredibly important for high risk treating those with cirrhosis. Okay. And in terms of maybe patients who aren't suffering from the liver disease, don't have underlying liver problems, um, has COVID-19 shown any um, ability to attack the liver? It's not really known at this point. Uh, what we know is that uh, elevated liver enzymes are really, really common in patients with COVID-19, but the exact cause for those elevated liver enzymes is unclear. Um, it's likely that it's, um, uh, it can be some combination of uh, the medications used for COVID-19, which can elevate liver enzymes, um, thrombotic complications, uh, systemic inflammation, or reduced blood flow to the liver. Um, there's some uh, data suggesting that COVID-19 may infect liver 
uh, cells themselves and, and potentially cause damage to the mitochondria. Um, but I think it's, it's too early to say for sure um, whether that's in fact the case.